Hi everyone. This presentation gives an overview of the new Proctor Air roof underlay membrane and some of the background factors around construction membranes and their purposes. We'll begin by reviewing the basics of condensation control, types of construction membranes used in our buildings and the functions they perform. We'll then move on to consider the most common configurations of pitched roof construction and some of the design factors that are relevant to each before looking at the composition and benefits of the Proctor Air membrane. So what is condensation and what causes it? Most everyday human activities such as cooking, cleaning and even just breathing generate moisture vapour and this, combined with warmer indoor environmental conditions, causes what is known as vapour pressure, pushing the moisture outwards into the building fabric. As we move through the fabric of the building, the temperature drops until it reaches the outside temperature. The warmer the air is, the more water vapour it can carry. So as this temperature drops, at a certain point the air will become saturated and dump this vapour out as liquid water. This is called the dew point. This is the same effect that causes bathroom mirrors to steam up or water droplets to form on a cold drink can if it occurs within the building fabric. It can cause damage or mould growth. To make sure we keep this under control, we must balance the design of the building and the materials we use with both the purpose of the building and the weather conditions it's expected to face. A warmer and more humid building like a swimming pool in a cold climate represents a far higher risk of moisture problems than say a largely unoccupied warehouse but somewhere warmer. So we must account for these factors when we're considering the materials and products used. At its simplest, we need to consider how heat, air and moisture move and interact within the building and make sure whatever is designed and built can cope with these conditions. The effects of these are all interlinked, so it's important to take an integrated or holistic view of these factors, rather than just looking at each one in isolation. Considering all these factors, almost every building will perform slightly differently, but achieving a detailed understanding of all the factors and physical properties involved is not always practical or possible. The function of construction membranes is therefore to ensure a degree of consistency can be achieved. This allows the properties and performance of any type of construction to be balanced, adapted and optimised to fit the project requirements. Correctly specified, membranes can complement the built-in strengths and advantages of the basic construction type, and we'll now consider the types of membrane commonly used and their functions. There are four primary applications for construction membranes in most types of building. Vapour control layers, which are typically used internally. Roofing underlays breather membranes, or more accurately, vapour permeable walling underlays, and geomembranes used for damp and gas protection. These membranes can all be further classified according to vapour permeability, air permeability, weather tightness, gas resistance, thermal resistance, UV exposure time, reaction to fire. The importance of these properties depends on the application, and clearly not all are applicable in every situation. How moisture is managed in buildings and how these properties affect the performance of the building envelope is detailed in the British Standard Document BS 5250, the Code of Practice for the Management of Moisture in Buildings. Introduced in the 1970s, initially as the Code of Practice for Control of Condensation, BS 5250 has grown into a comprehensive guide to controlling the movement and effects of moisture in buildings. BS 5250 is referenced in the building regulations across the UK and the Republic of Ireland as the primary source of guidance for managing all types of building moisture. When it comes to roofing, BS 5250 classifies underlay membranes into two basic types, HR and LR, which refers to high resistance or low resistance to the passage of moisture vapour. HR membranes such as traditional bitumen felt and its modern plastic equivalents do not allow moisture to pass through in any form. This provides a secondary barrier to the weather, but also means ventilation must be provided between the insulation and the underlay to ensure the moisture from the living space is not able to cause condensation problems. LR membranes still provide resistance to the passage of liquid water, but allow the passage of moisture vapour to varying degrees. The more vapour can pass through the membrane, the lower the condensation risk, and the less critical ventilation below the underlay becomes. Additionally, some LR membranes, like Proctor Air, allow air to move through the membrane as well as moisture vapour. This airflow, which is typically more uniform than that provided by ventilation, increases the rate at which moisture can escape the roof, and further reduces the condensation risk. 
Whilst the most recent edition of BS5250 acknowledges that underlay air permeability influences condensation risk, it does not discuss this in detail. Nor does it address situations where ventilation is limited altogether, with the vapour permeable underlaying the only means vapour can escape. In this situation, the air permeability of the underlay provides an important additional mechanism to manage this moisture flow by, in effect, allowing ventilation and airflow across the entire roof surface. If it's proposed that ventilation is removed from the roof entirely, BS5250 states that reference must be made to third-party certification covering the specific product and application. This means there may be variations between products in terms of the conditions and requirements that must be met. This is particularly significant where underlay air permeability is concerned. For example, some air permeable underlays such as Proctor Air do not require vapour control layer and or specific sealing specification to be met, whilst others may need the ceiling to be well sealed as defined in the BS9250 standard. Another example is roofs built to NHBC technical standards, where airtight vapour permeable underlays must have a 5mm ventilation opening at the ridge. If the underlay is air permeable, then this additional ventilation opening is no longer required, as the airflow through the membrane itself is sufficient to limit the condensation risk. In other cases, certain types of roof shapes or specific features such as timber sarking or photovoltaic panels may be excluded or have additional requirements attached. With the wide range of roof types in use today, it's therefore critical to ensure the correct certified specification is adhered to from design through to construction. Let's consider some of these types of roofs next. Firstly, we have cold pitched roofs where the insulation is placed at ceiling level with a large cold loft space above. In this type of roof, the insulation used is usually mineral fibre, as space is rarely an issue. Traditionally, these loft spaces are ventilated, with openings at the eaves and or ridge to allow airflow, but modern LR membranes may allow this ventilation to be reduced or eliminated, as is the case with Proctor Air. As we saw earlier, air permeable membranes like Proctor Air are the least restricted in terms of conditions attached to non-ventilated use. A warm pitched roof places the insulation along the slope of the roof keeping the spaces within the roof warm. Typically, rigid insulation boards are used in this type of application as space between rafters is more limited. Roofs made from structurally insulated panels or cross-laminated timber are also of this type. There are less restrictions and conditions applied to membrane types in this roof configuration, and ventilation is less common provided a type LR underlay is used. This is because the lack of large voids where moisture-laden air can accumulate reduces the condensation risk somewhat when compared to a cold roof construction. The third configuration of roof is the room in the roof, common to many properties where an existing loft has been converted into habitable space. In this type of roof there is a mix of warm and cold spaces and this can make providing adequate ventilation across the whole roof difficult. Proctor air works very well in this type of roof as it is used in a similar way across both cold and warm areas and usually requires no ventilation or other special measures in either type of roof. This means it also works well when a roof is built as a cold roof, but with provision made for a loft conversion in the future. The key to the high performance of Proctor Air compared to most other vapour permeable membranes is its three layer structure which is open to the passage of both water vapour and air. Where most vapour permeable underlays rely purely on diffusion to release moisture, a Proctor air roof also has substantial airflow through the roof voids. This works similarly to a conventionally ventilated roof, but because air can move across the entire roof surface, the airflow is more uniform and more reliable than conventional ventilation, greatly reducing the likelihood of moisture problems arising even under the most extreme conditions. At the same time, the hydrophobic additives present in all three layers work to actively repel liquid water, not just from the surface of the membrane but throughout its entire structure. In all but the most extreme weather conditions where it's recommended an additional tarpaulin covering is used, this provides effective temporary protection to buildings during construction until the outer covering is in place. If the outer roof covering is air permeable, roofs with Proctor Air do not require ventilation openings at the eaves or additional ventilation at the ridge, regardless of the size, shape or layer to the roof. This is particularly important for complex roof shapes or room in the roof constructions, where getting airflow evenly distributed throughout all of the roof voids can be a problem. Where the outer covering is not air open, 
for example fibre cement slates or roof integrated photovoltaic plates, then ventilation needs to be provided between proctor air and the outer covering to ensure moisture can escape at an adequate rate. Emitting low level ventilation also means loft insulation can be placed further into the eaves. This makes it far simpler to detail the junction between the roof and wall insulation, minimising heat loss in this area. As building regulations look for further lower U values, four to 500 millimetres of insulation may be needed at ceiling level. This makes ensuring ventilation path at eaves even harder. The temptation is to pull back the insulation, but this could lead to what is known as a cold bridge at the ceiling level at eaves, which could lead to condensation or black mould on the ceiling. The ceiling construction itself can also be simplified. While airtight LR underlays require the ceiling to be convection tight to minimise vapour ingress into the roof, the air permeability of Proctor Air means no special measure or vapour control layers required at the ceiling. This is particularly useful in re-roofing applications where it may not be otherwise necessary to replace the ceiling. The other significant weather factor to consider is wind and its effect on the roof system. As wind blows over a roof structure, the airflow presses on the windward side, creating a downward force, the wind pressure. On the leeward side of the roof, the airflow reduces the pressure, creating a suction, which pulls the roof upwards. This is the wind uplift force. The resistance to the uplift force is shared between the outer covering and the underlay, depending on the air openness of both parts. The effects of this are discussed in BS 5534, the Code of Practice for Slating and Tiling. If the roof is not correctly designed to resist these uplift forces, then in extreme cases, the tiles or slates of the outer covering can be damaged. And the BS 5534 standard sets criteria for underlays to resist wind forces and divides the UK into five wind zones. This table gives the uplift resistance force for the Proctor air membrane for each installation configuration, along with the measures that must be taken when used in each wind zone. As we can see here in zones one to four, no special measures are required at a 345 mm batten spacing. In the more extreme conditions of zone five, designers will either need to reduce their batten spacing to 250 mm or tape membrane joints. If, however, they are using the traditional Scottish slates into soft wood sarking detail, then use is unrestricted in all zones. So that concludes our intro into the Proctor air membrane. But if any further assistance is required, we have a dedicated technical team available to answer any queries, as well as a network of expert regional managers around the UK. Our team can provide specification advice and project-specific condensation risk assessment based on our years of experience working on all types of roofs across the UK and beyond. You can also visit our online learning hub at www.proctorgroup.com for more information. Thank you for your time today.